E. coherens are members of the family of transmembrane associated glycoproteins, which mediate specific cell to cell adhesion. This binding is happening in a calcium dependent manner, which is exactly where the name of the molecules comes from. They are the most important molecules involved in the formation of adherence junctions in the epithelial tissues. On the beautiful photo here, we see immunofluorescently stained breast cancer tissue using E. coherent antibody. Colored in green are the E. coherent molecules making cellular junctions between neighboring cells. Expression of coherent begins in the two cell stage of embryonic development where it plays a key role in the formation of tissues during gastrulation, neurulation, and organogenesis. It creates junctions between cells by homophilic binding, meaning that the binding occurs between two molecules of the same kind. Binding between different types of coherence usually does not happen. The quality, as well as the quantity of coherence bound to the cellular membrane, determines how and where are the cell is going to associate during gastrulation. Let's first explore the structure of E. coherent and try to elucidate how does its structure contribute to the formation of cell to cell adhesions. On the figure here, we see a classical structure of an E. coherent. As mentioned, E. coherents are transmembrane glycoproteins. They have a cytoplasmic domain, which interacts with the actin cytoskeleton through linker molecules. A specific domain at the E. coherent C terminus binds either a beta or gamma catenin. Alpha catenin then links the beta or gamma catenin to the actin cytoskeleton. E. coherents have a single membrane spanning segment and an N terminal extracellular segment, which consists of five tandemly repeater domains, EC1 to EC5. Extracellular domains of coherent molecules bound to two different cells bind homophilically to form adherence junctions. As you can see on this animation, two coherent extracellular domains bound to the same cell membrane dimerize. The extracellular dimers of neighboring cells then bind in calcium-dependent manner and form adherence junctions. Studies have shown that when single-point mutations are introduced and affinity for calcium binding is lessened, cell adhesion is impaired. We will now explore in further detail the structural properties of coherent extracellular domains which allow them to form rigid structures, dimerize, and bind to each other. X-ray crystallography has allowed the resolution of structure of the dimer of N-terminal extracellular domains EC1 and EC2 in the presence of calcium. The structure is a two-fold symmetric dimer as we can see on this animation. Here we see the ribbon structure of the EC1 and EC2 dimers. Each domain is composed of seven strain beta barrel motif. Successive extracellular domains have calcium stabilizing linkage regions in between them which bind three calcium ions each depicted in this image as green balls. Let's zoom in the image and look more closely at the calcium binding pocket. Negatively charged carboxylic groups of amino acids, aspartate and glutamate are found in these calcium binding pockets where they stabilize calcium binding through bridging interactions. These calcium mediated interactions account for a large number of non covalent interactions between the EC1 and EC2 domains. Molecular dynamic simulations have offered magnificent insight into calcium's role. They reveal that in the absence of calcium, coherence stick out of cell surfaces like ends of loose rope. On the other hand, in the presence of calcium, coherent molecules turn into stiff hooks then link cells together. These calcium-induced links can withstand the strong mechanical forces that arise between cells which are much, much larger than cathode molecules themselves. Using Conserv Server, I extracted the amino acid sequence of the EC1 and EC2 e coherent domains from the PDB file and found the sequence homologs. The program then performed the sequence alignment and calculation of conservation scores which were projected visually onto the 3D model of the molecule. Here we see the result of this alignment. The amino acids colored in purple 
are the most conserved amino acids among the sequenced homologs. Not surprisingly, the most conserved part of the e cadherin EC1 and EC2 dimer is exactly the calcium binding pocket. Primary motivation for choosing to speak about e cadherin was that it was recently found that the adorable cancer resistant animals, called blind mole rats, have a few types of cadherin molecules upregulated. The lab is now thinking about possible implications of this finding to the overall hypothesis of the blind mole rat cancer resistance. However, it is long known that e cadherins and some other types of cadherins indeed act as tumor suppressors by suppressing the cancer property of cellular migration. Activating invasion and metastasis is recognized as one of the six hallmarks of cancer. The best characterized alteration of carcinoma's attachment to other cells is exactly the decrease of e cadherin expression levels. We can see here that the cancer cells on the left side of the figures have significantly decreased levels of e cadherin, colored in green, as compared to the cells on the right side. These cells are in the later stages of cancer progression. Frequently observed downregulation and occasional mutational inactivation of e cadherin in human carcinomas provides strong support for its role as a key suppressor of cellular invasion and metastasis. This is the reason researchers today are trying to develop cancer therapeutics which are targeting the increase of expression of e cadherin in the cancer cells with the hope to decrease tumor invasiveness.